All right, folks, we're moving on to the electronic charging scale or, 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 or cylinder scale. You know, there's a couple other terms you could use with this. And this is basically just a scale that the cylinder sits on so that you can determine how much refrigerant has been added to the cylinder during the recovery procedure. So it comes in its own little kind of carrying case. And again, this is a Master Cool product, and I guess let me make sure I read off the number here. So this is a Master Cool 98210-A AccuCharge 2. And this is again more of an entry level um, component. Got a warranty card in here. Here's the scale itself, nothing else included. Got some adjusting feet on it. Has a little bubble level on it. It's really intended though to be left inside of this carrying case. Here's the uh, control unit. Has a little stand piece here and it takes a nine volt battery, which they conveniently include for you. Has a little uh, cover on it to expose the terminals. Personally, I would leave this kind of insulation material in there. I don't know if that was meant to be discarded, but when I see that kind of stuff, I like to leave it in there. Just keeps the battery from rattling around. Hit on, it comes up and says, hello. And it zeroes itself out. So the way we're gonna use something like this, is we're gonna carry this down over onto the ground here. Move our cylinder out of the way. Put our cylinder on the scale. We can actually discard this little netting that's part of the shipping material. I should have got that in the video where I commissioned this guy. And so he's telling you that this empty tank weighs 17.85 pounds. And what you would end up doing on this to, to get it ready to actually use, and they tell you about this in the instructions. So let me set this aside so we can get a, a close up on that. Right on the inside cover of the carrying case, uh, they talk to you about how to get this set up. So here you have just basic charging, right? Program charging would be if you had a, an accessory that plugged into this guy, it has like a USB accessory, but we're not using that. This is again, very entry level, uh, but still shop grade equipment. We're gonna do the basic charging piece. So you've got the uh, level, you got the case on a level surface, you got the tank on the center of the platform, and, and then they make a note that, you know, if you've got a disposable tank, you might want to put it upside down. This is not a disposable tank, like we mentioned in the commissioning video. You want to make sure that the um, lines have been purged of atmospheric air using a vacuum pump. You press the on off button on the control unit. You press the tear enter button to tur turn it to zero. And, and then um, you open the valve to begin the charging. So this is a charging step. It would be pretty much the same thing for recovery. And in fact, we notice right over here for recovery, it says repeat steps one through seven in basic charging. And then instead of, take, instead of charging the system, you're gonna recover. So if we slide this guy back to where he was, set our recovery cylinder on the scale. We wait for it to show the 17.850, and then we hit the tear button and it zeroes it out. And so now when we start putting refrigerant into the tank, will be able to measure exactly how much went into the tank. It's very important because it's, uh, uh, an automotive system cannot be undercharged or overcharged. So it's very important to get an accurate reading. And if you're going to be doing servicing on automotive air conditioning systems, you need to have the scale with the tank when you're trying to recover. So you know how much came out of the system. So you know how much, when you put it back in, it might not have been the correct charge that was recovered. So you need to know how much came out and what's the delta of how much you might now need to add. All right, guys, this is just another view of our scale in action while we're doing a recovery operation. You can hear the recovery machine there in the background buzzing away. We've currently got 19.85 pounds in the cylinder. We just went up to 19.90. And so that they, you get a very precise measurement of the amount of R134A that's being put into the cylinder as you do the recovery from the vehicle by using a product like this type of electronic cylinder scale. At some point, the recovery machine will shut off and that'll give us the final reading 
of, of how much that we've put into the tank. Of course, then to calculate the delta, you would have wrote down the, the amount that was in the tank to begin with, take this new amount and subtract it, and that tells you how much refrigerant you pulled from this particular vehicle on that particular recovery operation. All right, guys, so let's talk a little bit about some of the other usage parameters on this scale. So if we power it back on here, it's going to come up. I've had this sitting up in pounds, so it's always going to express pounds and fractional pounds. So we put the uh, tank back on there. We've used this tank a few times, so we've got some refrigerant in there. And so we're reading 20 and a half pounds, really. You can cycle through this units button and you can put that into something that might be more uh, readable. In this case, 20 pounds, eight ounces. And if you want, if you need to, for whatever reason, you can also express it in kilograms. So I tend to try to prefer to keep it like this. Um, you can also, you know, switch it to the others and it will remember what you switch even when you do a power off. So for example, if we say, well, I'm gonna set this to pounds and ounces and then I'm gonna turn it off. If I take our weight off, and power it back on, it's going to come up the way we left it in pounds and ounces. The second thing I'm going to talk about is calibration. There's a calibration procedure listed on the cover. If you don't have the case, you can also download it for this model, the 98210A. You can download it from uh, mastercool.com, and it's basically this, the same thing. If you download the PDF, though, these special buttons don't come out in the PDF, I noticed. They just look like regular arrows. What you see on this, what they're talking about. I have here a calibration weight. It's an eight ounce calibration weight. And all the calibration weight is, is when you buy it from a company, and I don't roll the name of the company I, I use for this one, um, it, it's just that company saying, I'm guaranteeing this weighs exactly what I stamp on it. In this case, it's an eight ounce calibration weight. If I put it on there, we see exactly eight ounces on the display. Now, if it was off, you can't actually use something this small to calibrate it. They don't say anything about up here about that. But I did call Mastercool before putting this video together, and I spoke to the technical support guy there, and he told me basically this procedure, even though they don't tell it to you, this procedure can, has to be done with a 20-pound calibration weight. So in the event that you didn't get the right reading, when you go through the procedure here, you're going to need a 20-pound calibration weight, at least according to what Mastercool told me at the time I made this video. All right, so a couple other things then just to point out here. The, when, I, when I am not using this, what I recommend you do is to remove the battery. And the reason for that, this is an expensive piece of electrical equipment. And this particular battery they gave you, you know, is some kind of an off-brand here. Even if you stuck a Duracell or an Everetti in there, if it's not a lithium, you run the risk of it leaking and you don't want it to damage any electronics here, especially if you don't use it that frequently. So I recommend you store it with that guy removed and you can just keep the battery in here, you know, the way it came when you, when you first open it up like we showed earlier. I also recommend, even though you've shown, seen me in this video showing it sitting inside this case, I recommend you take it out of the case to make sure that all of the feet on the bottom are properly leveled. And if they're not, you can use that by using the little bubble here. You can adjust them by hand. It just turned out, in my case, that I did make sure that everything was nice and level here. Yeah, it's off by maybe a little hair, like a half a millimeter or something like that. We're not like, you know, um, measuring stuff in a scientific lab here. So as long as we're down to uh, the ounce level of calibration, we're fine. So I hope you found this useful. If you learned something or you did find it useful, go ahead and give us a like on this video. If you found that uh, you had questions or something you didn't understand or even something I didn't cover that you'd like to ask, go ahead and leave a comment below. Otherwise, thanks for watching and please consider subscribing.